క్వీన్స్ ఎన్ఆర్ఐ సో ఫ్రమ్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ నియర్లీ ఎయిట్ ఇయర్స్ హీ హెస్ బిన్ వర్కింగ్ ఇన్ బోత్ ఓమ్ని ఆర్కే అండ్ ఏబిసి రెగ్యులర్ నైట్ డ్యూటీ కన్సల్టెంట్ అండ్ ఆల్సో సమ్టైమ్స్ హీ కవర్స్ ఫర్ యూస్ టు కవర్ ఫర్ డాక్టర్ కవిత అండ్ నౌ సమ్టైమ్స్ డే షిఫ్ట్స్ ఇన్ ఏబిసి సో ఎ వెరీ హార్డ్ వర్కింగ్ పర్సన్ ఐ హెవ్ సీన్ అండ్ క్వైట్ ఇంట్రెస్టెడ్ ఇన్ అకాడమిక్స్ బట్ a bit shy to take classes with my instructor today he is going to uh, talk on gulenberry syndrome in general and a, a few uh, briefly a few uh, two or three cases uh, tough, ca- tough complicated cases he has seen in uh, both omni arc and abc thank you so uh, another yeah. start the presentation security ke baat నరేష్ స్టార్ట్ చేశాను హలో నరేష్ సార్ వినిపిస్తుందా సార్ ఆ వినిపిస్తుంది స్టార్ట్ ద ప్రెజెంటేషన్ సార్ సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ एवरीवन టుడే వి ఆర్ డిస్కసింగ్ అబౌట్ ద మిలియన్ స్లైడ్ షో మోడ్ లో పెట్టది పెట్టండి సార్ అవుతుందా సార్ మూవ్ అవుట్ లేదా ఇందర్ లైక్ మోడ్ లో రాలేదు ఫస్ట్ టైం నువ్వు షేర్ చేసినప్పుడు వచ్చింది ఇప్పుడు రాట్టది మళ్ళా లాగిన్ అవుతావా ఆ సరే సార్ ఒకసారి షేరింగ్ స్టాప్ చేసి మళ్ళీ రీషేర్ చేస్తా వచ్చేస్తా ఓన్లీ స్టాప్ చేయండి షేరింగ్ స్టాప్ చేసి స్టార్ట్ చేయండి సార్ వస్తుందా సార్ వస్తుంది స్టార్ట్ చేయి స్టార్ట్ చేయ నరేష్ వస్తుంది గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఎవరి మ్యామ్ టుడే యూఆర్ డిస్కసింగ్ అబౌట్ ద జీబి సిండ్రోమ్ సో గిలియర్ బర్డ్ సిండ్రోమ్ ఈజ్ అండ్ పోస్ట్ ఇన్ఫెక్షియస్ ఆటో ఇమ్యూన్ పాలినోరోపతి మోస్ట్లీ క్యారెక్టరైజ్డ్ బై ఎక్యూట్ ఫ్లాసిడ్ పెరాలిసిస్ విత్ ఆర్ విత్అౌట్ సెన్సరీ ఆర్ అటనామిక్ నర్వస్ డిస్ఫంక్షన్ విత్ అన్ యాన్యువల్ ఇన్సిడెంట్స్ ఆఫ్ జీరో పాయింట్ ఎయిట్ వన్ టూ 1.89 cases per 1 lakh persons worldwide males are slightly more affected than females the in hospital mortality rate of gvs is approximately 2.62.8% the mortality depend upon severity of the weakness at the time of entry time to peak uh, the disability need of mechanical ventilation old days and pulmonary and cardiac complications gbs pathologically affect the peripheral nervous system and it is classified into several subtypes according to the clinical and pathological features the most common subtypes of gbs are acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy acute axonal acute ax, uh, acute motor axonal neuropathy less common subtype is miller fisher syndrome other variant of gbs are there but there are rarely present like uh, pharyngeal uh, gbs uh, so we will discuss that gbs is a monophasic disease usually reaching maximum severity within 4 weeks one study showed that 80% of patient with gbs reaches their maximum severity within 2 weeks after onset of weakness and a 90% reaches their weakness within 4 weeks a further subset of patient reaches their weakness of the disease within 4 to 6 week of the onset of weakness there are three phases in uh, disease progression that is the first one is uh, plateau phase in plateau phase the infection previous infection was there but there is no any signs of inflammation uh, any signs of weakness plateau phase is followed by progressive phase it, it may ranges from 2 days to 6 months to 6 months 
and let and before the patient start to recovery this is the diagrammatic representation this the red line shows the infectious phase the patient was previously infected with uh, uh, abdom uh, abdominal uh, uh, infections or respiratory infection in this phase there is no evidence of weakness when the after two weeks or uh, two to four weeks of uh, infection phase there is a slightly increasing in the weakness uh, and gradually it uh, uh, it was worsening up to the maximum limit and after that it will start recover so in this phase there is uh, after infection the uh, anti ganglionic antibodies will start uh, after two weeks two weeks of infection it will re uh, it will reaches maximum after symptoms of two weeks and it will gradually disappear after three months these are the potential precipitating factors of gbs most commonly infection the infections are most common bacterial infections are campylobacter jejuni and mycoplasma the viral infections are cytomegalovirus herpes herpes zoster epstein barr virus and hiv some cases are reported after flu vaccination and uh, some cases are reported after respiratory tract infection most commonly mycoplasma mycoplasma and post surgical uh, uh, gbs also possible the post uh, the definition of the post surgery gbs is if patient uh, symptoms like gbs will develop less than 6 weeks to 8 weeks of uh, post surgery it will be considered as gbs most commonly uh, after orthopedic or abdominal surgeries the post surgery gbs is most common uh, in mostly if patient is suffering from malignancy of uh, malignancy we did the surgery for malignancy there are high chances of uh, gbs in those patients this is a pathophysiology of the gbs guillain barre syndrome is the result of cell mediated immune attack on peripheral nerve myelin proteins the best accepted theory is that an infection organism contain an amino acid that mimic the peripheral nerve myelin protein the immune system cannot distinguish between the two proteins and attack two protein and attack and destroy the peripheral nerve myelin the ganglioside gm1b is the most likely target of the immune attack with the autoimmune attack there is influx of the macrophages and other immune mediated agent that attack the myelin sheet causes inflammation and a destruction and leave the axon unable to support their nerve conduction this is the diagrammatic uh, uh, representation when the patient infected with campylobacter jejuni Uh, the uh, the uh, our cell immune response will uh, produce some antibodies this antibodies will uh, attack down the campylobacter jejunum as well as the peripheral nerves if the uh, the anti the anti uh, the antibodies attack on the axon it is called as uh, aman aman and it it mostly affect on the node of the runway and if the attack attack on the shrank cells it is called as aidp acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy it only affect the shrank cells in amon the anti gbn or anti gd1 cross reactive antibodies is there the clinical symptoms include initially patient presented with weakness the classical weakness is ascending and symmetrical in nature the lower limbs are usually involved before the upper limbs proximal muscles involved earlier than the more distal ones trunk bulbar and respiratory muscles can be affected as well patient may be unable to stand or walk in spite of reasonable strength especially when ophthalmoparesis or impaired power perception is present weakness developed acutely and progress over days to weeks severity may range from mild weakness to complete tetraplegia with ventilatory failure these are the weakness types this is the complete uh, gillian gillian bar syndrome the weakness start from the toes and affect every muscle of the body and this is a paraplegic gbs weakness only limited to the lower limbs this is faring a cervical brachial weakness mostly it affect the neck muscles uh, brachial nerves and uh, lower part of the face this is the bifacial weakness with paresthesia this is the miller fisher syndrome it is the typical syndrome it is in this only first sensory uh, nerves are involved later muscle weakness will be there there is next cranial nerve involvement cranial nerve involvement is observed in 45 to 75 percent of patient with gbs cranial are mostly 3 to 7 and 9 to 12 may be affected 
common complaints include facial droop, diplopia, dysarthria, dysphagia, ophthalmoplasia, pupillary disturbance, disturbances. Facial and orofacial weakness usually appears after the trunk, trunk and limb are affected. The only Miller Fisher variant of the GBS is unique. In this, the subtype began with the cranial nerve defect. Pain. On initial presentation, almost 50% of patients described as the pain as the severe and the distressing. Pain is most severe in the shoulder girdle, back, buttock, thighs, and may occur even in the slight movements. Dysesthesia are observed in about 50% of patients during the course of their illness. It is described as burning, tingling, or shock-like sensation and are often more prevalent in the lower limbs than in upper limbs. It may be persist definitely in indefinitely in five to ten percent of patient. There are most of the patient have in severe disease autonomic changes was there. Autonomic changes include tachycardia, bradycardia, facial flushing, paroxysmal hypertension, orthostatic hypertension, anhidrosis or diaphoresis. Bowel and bladder dysfunction are rarely rarely early, but if it is there, it will be persistent for a long time. Dysautonomy is more frequent in patients with severe weakness and respiratory failure. Autonomic changes rarely persistent in patients with GBS. They, if respira uh, some patients, 40% of patients have respiratory involvement. Typical complaints include dyspnea and exertion, shortness of breath, difficulty in swallowing. Ventilate, ventilatory failure with required respiratory support occur in up to one third of patient at some time during the course of the disease. When come to the diagnostic, the most uh, reliable diagnostic factor is that uh, NCS, electrodiagnostic features. The most common uh, features we observe is conduction velocity reduced in two or more nerves, CMAP conduction block or abnormal temporal dispersion in one or more nerves, prolonged distal motor latencies in two or more nerves, prolonged or prolonged minimum F wave latencies or absent F waves. The electrodiagnostic feature suggestive of only axonal neuropathy. In axonal neuropathy, there is no evidence of demyelination. So no evidence of significant reduction in conduction velocity, no evidence of abnormal temporal dispersion, prolonged distal latencies not considered demyelination if amplitude less than 10% uh, of lower normal limit. Decrease in CAMP in uh, uh, MR and the SNAP in uh, uh, AMSC and uh, uh, MSAN to 80% of lower level normal limit is intextable. In CSF finding, combination of elevated protein level and normal cell count in the CSF, termed as albinocytological uh, dissociation, is the diagnostic features of GBS. Uh, mainly, we are doing lumbar puncture to rule out other diagnoses. Lumbar puncture initially, lumbar puncture was initially, if lumbar puncture was done, there is only uh, uh, high protein levels will consider. The uh, ideal time for lumbar puncture is after two weeks of symptoms. Testing for anti ganglionic antibodies. Uh, these also initially these are test the, the after some after uh, appearing of symptoms initially there is there may be absent of anti gangrocyte antibodies in the blood but uh, if the negative value doesn't mean that there is the, the, uh, negative means there is the, uh, no GBS uh, so anti GQ one B antibodies which are present in, in serum of at least ninety percent of patient with Miller Fisher syndrome. Anti GM1 and anti GD1 IG antibodies, which are frequently found in patients with AMA. So, these are the diagnostic features of William Barry syndrome. So, diagnostic criteria. So, feature required for diagnosis of William Barry syndrome is progressive motor weakness of more than one limb, reflexia, or marked hyperreflexia. Features strongly supportive of the diagnosis is progression over days to less than four weeks. Relative symmetry, pain often significant at onset, mild sensory symptoms or signs, cranial nerves involvement, autonomic dysfunction, absent of fever at the onset of symptoms, onset of recovery two to four weeks after onset of plateau phase. The laboratory finding as we discussed earlier, elevated cerebrospinal fluid protein levels after one week of symptoms. 
So there is uh, less than 10% of leukocyte count in uh, spinal fluid and this uh, slowed conduction or conduction blocks in uh, NCS. Uh, there are acute, this is acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. These we have additional symptoms that is progress of phase last from days to four weeks, relatively symmetry, symmetry of the symptoms, mild sensory symptoms or signs, cranial nerve involvement, especially bilateral weakness of the facial muscle was there and autonomic dysfunction is the pain was often. Neural conduction studies finding shows that features of demyelination is there. Prolonged distal motor latencies, decreased motor nerve conduction velocities, increased F-wave latency, conduction box and temporal dispersion was there. Acute motor axonal neuropathy. Here there is no signs of uh, demyelination. So there is no sensory symptoms. Cranial nerve environment is very rare. So when come to the MCS, there is no features of demyelination or one or, uh, or one demyelinating feature in a nerve, uh, in nerve if distal CMAP amplitude is less than 10% of lower normal limits. These are the different type of uh, GBS and the antibodies which are uh, presented in a different type of GBS. First AIDP, there is sensory motor, main clinical feature is sensory motor GBS often combined with cranial nerve deficit and frequent autonomic dysfunction. NCS findings, there is signs of demyelination was there, polyneuropathy was there. Antibodies are various. Acute motor axonal neuropathy, pure motor GBS, cranial nerves rarely affected. Axonal polyneuropathy, uh, NCS findings are axonal polyneuropathy, sensory action potentials are normal. In uh, Aman, GM1A, GM1B, GD1A, G1A, NAC, NAC, D1, GD1A, are in, uh, these are autoantibodies present in the blood. The asthma, uh, the acute motor uh, sensory axonal neuropathy, this is the uh, type of acute motor neuropathy, but sensory involvement was there. There is no difference between the, uh, the, the main difference between the Amon and uh, uh, Amsan was uh, sensory involvement. Pharyngeal cervical and uh, brachial variant, their prominent weakness of oropharyngeal facial and neck and shoulder muscles was there. Normal in most patients, MCS, sometimes abnormalities in arms, mostly axonal pattern. This is the Miller Fisher variant syndrome. Ataxia, ophthalmopathy, aeroflexia is the classical triad of uh, Miller Fisher syndrome. Not NCS normal in most of the patient. Discrete changes in sensory conduction or H reflex may be present. Features that should raise a doubt about the diagnosis of GBS sir. The uh, increase in number of mononuclear cells in cerebrospinal fluid or polymorphs in the CS of uh, may suspicious uh, may exclude the diagnosis of uh, GBS. Severe pulmonary dysfunction with limited limb weakness, limb weakness at onset. Severe sen sensory sign with limited weakness at onset. Bladderal bowel dysfunction at onset. Fever at onset. Sharp spinal cord level, sensory levels and slow progression with limited weakness and without respiratory involvement, uh, these symptoms are mostly unlikely features of uh, GBS. If the slow progression with limited weakness without respiratory involvement, we consider as we have to consider subacute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy or acute onset chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. If, uh, symptoms, if weakness was asymmetric, we have to rule out the GBS. The treatment of GBS usually combined multidisciplinary support to our medical care and immunotherapy. Proven effective treatments for GBS are IVIG and the plasma exchange. Immunotherapy is usually started if patient are not able to walk 10 minutes independently. When we come to the intravenous immunoglobulins, IVIG treatment may inhibit FC-mediated activation of immune cells, binding of anti-ganglioside antibodies to their neural targets or local complement activation. IVIG is effective in patients who are unable to walk greater than 10 minutes with support, without support. When started within the two weeks of the onset of weakness, the effect will be more. Randomized control trials showed that IVIG at the dose of 0.4 gram per kg daily over five constitutive days 
or 1 gram per kg dilute over 2 days was effective as a full course of uh, 5 plasma exchange sessions applied over 2 weeks. Plasma exchange is thought to be remove neurotoxic antibodies, complement factors and other humoral, uh, humoral, uh, humoral mediators of inflammation from the bloodstream. Patient with GBS, are, uh, GBS routinely benefited from the standard um, plasma exchange schedules. That standard was 5 sessions with 40 to 50 ml plasma exchange per kg per session within 4 to 7, day, 7 to 14 days. A total 200 to 250 ml per kg was exchanged over 7 to 10 days. Usually, plasma exchange is performed every other day to allow the redistribution of pathogenic agent in both extravascular and intravascular component. In mild GBS, two sessions of plasma exchange are superior to one. In moderate GBS, four sessions are superior to two. In severe GBS, six sessions are better than the, no better than four. Uh, this is the difference between the plasma exchange and IVIG. Usually, the resume shows 200 to 250 ml per kg plasma over five sessions over seven to four uh, over seven to fourteen days. Uh, the same IVIG 0.4 kg IV over five days. The rationale is removal of auto antibodies and other humoral factor from the blood. Uh, IVIG reduce the inflammatory cytokine production and inhibit the C. The disadvantage of plasma exchange is limited availability, require uh, an experienced team. Um, when it comes to the IVIG, allergy, headache, transient LFT elevation, and meningitis are common. Uh, contraindications are uh, in, uh, when coagulopathy was there and thrombocytopenia was there, hemodynamic instability, poor venous excess, we can't able to do plasma exchange. In that case, IVIG is the better option. If the patient previously has uh, allergy to IVIG, Naresh, can you voice get it up, please? Sir, okay. Sir. If a patient, uh, if patient have previously allergy to IVIG, we can't able to do IVIG. So in that case, we will go with plasma versus. The combination of plasma exchange followed by IVIG is not significantly better than either plasma exchange or IVIG alone. Oral steroid and intravenous methylprednisolone are no beneficial in patients with GBS. The combination of IVIG and methylprednisolone is no more effective than IVIG alone. Although this combination treatment might have some additional short-term benefits when known prognostic factors are taken into account. When management of the respiratory failure, GBS is the most common peripheral neuropathy causing respiratory paralysis. The simple bedside single breath count, which correlate well with the vital capacity, then phrenic nerve conduction studies is a good predictor of respiratory failure. Uh, when we, if patient uh, uh, respiratory paralysis longer than uh, two weeks, we better to do tracheostomy uh, following intubation and should be based on the status of individuals. Management of dysautonomia. Acute dysautonomia is a significant cause of death in patient, uh, patient with GBS. Cardiac and hemodynamic disturbance manifestation as hypertension, postural hypotension, and tachycardia occur in a majority of GBS patients. Tachycardia is most common usually in the range of 100 to 120 per minute, which does not require treatment. Approach to instant, uh, inserting a pacemaker for serious bradycardia or sinus arrest have varied widely because the uncertainty of the exist, exists and uh, anticipates such events at the bedside by different ways. Hypertension is seen in one third of the patient with GBS and can be labile or be, or be followed by the hypotension. If hypertension is severe, mean arterial pressure is more than 125 mg and uh, antihypertensive with short of life, like labitalol, esmolol, nitroxide, should be considered, infusion should be considered. Hypotension can be managed by maintaining intravascular volume and avoid using diuretics. Uh, pronounced and persistent hypotension should be warned such for other causes such as sepsis, myocardial infection and pulmonary thromboembolism or use of narcotics or positive pressure ventilation. 
Gastrointestinal mortality is at a recurring 15% of severely affected patients, GBS patients. Illness is associated with other features of dyscertinomia. Uh, this mortality can be effectively managed by suspension, uh, sus uh, suspension of enteral feedings, nasogastric suctioning, and erythromycin or uh, neostigmates. Hyponatremia is common, ab abnormal, common electrolyte abnormalities in GBS and it is due to SIADH majority of the cases and natriuresis. Both, requirement, uh, both require fluid resuscitation, uh, re re replacement of sodium, but as SIADH need fluid destruction in case of natriuresis, required intravascular volume expansion. The best way to differentiate these two conditions by measuring the central venous pressure. So all patients should be defined thrombosis prophylaxis. All patients should be given subact uh, subcutaneous fractionated or unfractionated heparin and support and support stalking until they are able to walk independently to prevent deep vein thrombosis. Prolonged bed ridden period is anticipated and a, a trichostomy has already been performed. Institute oral anticoagulant treatment with warfarin and covid pain and sensory symptoms. There are uh, reported in majority of patients with GBS and uh, should be treated effectively with opioid analogs, uh, analogs. Sedation and bowel hypermotility may be a problem. Other drugs such as gabapentin, carbamazepine, estaminophen, NSAIDs, and anti-tricyclic antidepressants can be used. Nasogastric or gastric tube feeding should be uh, started early and slowly. Uh, mostly high energy, uh, non-protein, uh, non-protein uh, kilocalories 40 to 50, 40 to 45 kilocalories per kg, and high protein diet 2 to 2.5 grams per kg have been recommended so that to reduce muscle wasting and assist respiratory weaning. Treatment of patient who deterioration in spite of therapy. Some patient with GBS continues to deteriorate after plasma exchange or a standard course of IVIC. In these cases, the best option is unknown. A study in a small series of patients investigated the effect of second dose of uh, IVIG in severe unresponsive patient with GBS. Although no RCT has assessed that the effect of, effect of a repeated IVIG dose in this condition. If we want to give the second dose, it is recommended second dose is 0 0.4 gram per kg in five days. A longer interval between the onset, of, uh, onset, and, onset and treatment and a longer time to uh, peak stage of the disease may be associated with greater chances of relapse. So this is the, uh, this is the uh, some critical 10 points about GBS. Uh, when to suspect GBS? Rapidly progression bilateral limb weakness and sensory deficit or hypo or, hypo or areflexia, facial or bulbar palsy, ophthalmopages and ataxias. Next, how to diagnose GFS, GBS? Check diagnostic criteria, exclude other cause, consider routine laboratory test, CSF examination and NCS. Uh, acute care, when to admit it in ICU? One or more uh, rapid... Uh, Rapid progression of weakness, severe autonomic dysfunction, and difficulty in swallowing, uh, and evolving respiratory distress. Uh, fourth, when to start treatment. Inability to walk greater than 10 minutes of 10 minutes independently. Rapid progression of weakness, severe autonomic and uh, swallowing dysfunctions, and the respiratory insufficiency is there. We have to take the patient. Treatment option include intravenous immunoglobulins 4 gram per 0.4 gram per kg dilute over five days plasma exchange. What we have to monitor is regularly assess the muscle strength of the patient, respiratory function, swallowing function, and autonomic functions, blood pressures, heart rate, rhythm, and the bladder and bowel, bowel control. The early complications of GBS are cardiac arrhythmias, infections, deep vein thrombosis, pain, delirium, depression, and urinary retention, constipation, corneal ulceration, dietary deficiency, hyponatremia, pressure ulcers, compression neuropathy, and lumbar contractures. Clinical problems, treatment-related fluctuations and repeated same treatment. No initial response or incomplete recovery, no evidence of repeating the treatment. 
the predicted outcome predicted is calculated by MEGOs on admission. Uh, recovery can continue greater than three years after onset. Uh, reduced, uh, recurrence is rare, that is two to five percent of patient. Rehabilitation start a rehabilitation program early, manage long term complications like fatigue, pain, and uh, psychological uh, distress. The prognosis GBS is the serious long term impact on patients, work, and private life even six, three to six years after onset of illness. Recovery can be slow and take years. Persistent disability is seen in 20% to 30% of adult patients, but is less common in children. Severe fatigue is a sequel of GBS in two third of adult patient. So we have one case in uh, ABC ICU. We are discussing that also. A 40 year, 45 years morbid obese female patient had a history of TAH and BSO 10 days back prior to admission uh, for suspicion of ovarian malignancy. The, after uh, surgery, it confirmed uh, adenocarcinoma. The surgery was done outside. On fifth period, a patient complains of abdominal pain initially, later she developed, she developed SOB and fever spikes. See, outside CT abdomen plane was done, it was shows hemoperitoneum and hem hematoma in pelvic cavity. Uh, in the, at the same, the same time, the SLB gradually worsening and abdominal distension was there, abdominal distension was increased. So they, they referred the case to higher center. They came to our hospital. She came to hospital with abdominal distension and pain with severe breathlessness and desaturation. So initially, NIV started a necessary investigation done, including a CECT abdomen, which shows signs of bowel, bowel, bowel perforation. The pneumoperitone, actually pneumoperitone was there. Immediately, gastrosurgeon opinion taken, emergency laparotomy was there. Bowel perforation and fecal peritonitis was the intraoperative findings. Intraoperative was uneventful. On POD3, there is, uh, there is no fecal spikes, TLC counts was decreasing in trend, patient was extubated and mobilized. She was comfortable and tolerating oral feeds. On POD6, suddenly she had complaints of lower limb weakness and unable to stand or walk. So we advised NCS. So we advised NCS, which shows absent of F wave and prolonged latency in all nerves in both lower limbs. So neurophysician opinion taken and started IVIG. 400 mg per kg over five days in view of GBS versus critical illness neuropathy. Uh, it could be a GBS or critical illness uh, neuropathy. The, uh, the points favors toward the GBS is uh, patient exhibits symptoms of GBS within six weeks of uh, surgery. There is short duration of illness. Critical illness uh, neuropathy will take long time to develop weakness. Initially, she was after surgery, she was able to walk. Later, she developed a sudden weakness. So we thought of uh, doing NCS and it was confirmed, uh, we confirmed it to GBS. After five days of giving IVIG to patient, weakness was gradually improved. Over two weeks of IVIG, she is uh, able to, uh, after two weeks uh, of IVIG, she able to walk and she went home walk by walk with happy face. Thank you, sir. Hello. Uh, thank you, Narish. So, any questions, additions, inputs? Welcome, seniors, and all your experiences. Thank you, doctor. I'm Dr. Srinivas. So, nice case uh, presentation. And good discussion. And uh, see, I would uh, this patient post-operative patient. Sir. So, did you do an MRI? No, sir. Why? So, because there is no any symptom. Only uh, she was perfectly all right. She was uh, uh, she was conscious levels was very good. But uh, only symptom is uh, uh, she was uh, previously he was uh, after post update post POD three. We mobilized him and we we let her let her to watch. Oh, I understood. She she is having yeah. paraplegia, paraplegia yes. or paraparesis. Yes, sir. Weakness of paresis, paresis, oh, sir. Yes, sir. So differential diagnosis. What you are thinking in your mind? One is GBS. Yes. Any sir. other thing? 
any uh, any uh, that uh, trans uh, the that was the uh, transverse myelitis like symptoms spinal cord compressions oh ah, yeah so we need to do an mr compulsory mandatory so for this patient uh, to identify sir. even though ncs is uh, okay that has to be done sir. but definitely you need to rule out any spinal cord uh, anatomical pathology is there sir the, actually we have a doubt of that sir but the patient was unable to stand he, 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 that there is no complete uh, paraplegia sir No, over one over one day over one or two days suddenly she developed no, no, differential uh, diagnosis means all of this will come suddenly only okay sir okay so that's the reason why okay sir you need to do it okay sir hello sir so a patient is in the hospital and there is a protracted scores like previously she had a cesarean section or something the total abdominal hysterectomy for some sir, suspected sir. malignancy sir followed by some mishap and then admitted in another hospital found sir, fatal peritonitis so it's a protracted course of illness we consider the illness phase uh, starting from the day of the first surgery sir yes so sir still there is a possibility uh, like critical illness polyneuropathy we need to have a definitive um, uh, diagnostic criteria to separate it from existing your diagnosis first thing second thing is uh, is it not a paraneoplasm what is the biopsy for that finding biopsy erinocarcinoma sir so is there any possibility of paraneoplastic syndrome which is exhibited as uh, polyneuromyopathy um, maybe I, i don't know so that. to delineate that we need to is there any possibility to look into uh, csf analysis and uh, albuminocytological uh, dissociation in this patient cs of done sir it was shows oh. the normal uh, counts and high protein level was there sir fr150 was there sir okay so usually one thing is duration is mad, uh, important there when are we going to do the lp usually it is negative in the first week if it is gabs yes yes sir second thing is we need to look for the poly paraneoplastic uh, syndromes presenting as polyneuropathy Okay, third sir. possibility still there is like critical illness polyneuropathy though all the three things will improve with ivig yes sir treatment uh, is not the reason to diagnose the disease yes, sir till we are uh, like uh, having a differential diagnosis of it is cipnm or uh, paraneoplastic syndrome sir, maybe sir. gbs is one among them yes, sir uh, that is anything sir we discuss sir sadish sir మజిల్ బయాప్సీ గానీ నౌ కండక్షన్ స్టడీ గానీ చేసి తెలుస్తుందా సార్ మీరు నన్ను అడుగుతున్నారు కానీ అదే కరెక్ట్ కదా మీరు చెప్పాలి కదా అది మీరు మళ్ళీ మామే తోస్తారు అది ఇట్ షుడ్ బి డన్ సార్ ఇంకోటి ఈయనకి ఏమన్నా స్పైనల్ కార్డ్ కూడా ఏమన్నా అంటే ఇట్ కెన్ అడినో కార్డ్స్ మెటాస్టైసిస్ ఛాన్సెస్ ఉంటే అది కూడా ఉండొచ్చు బట్ పెట్ చేసి ఉంటారే వీళ్ళు ముందు సర్జరీ ముందు అంటే ఇది సర్జరీ కూడా డై ఆన్ సస్పీషియస్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాలిగ్నెన్సీ మీద చేసారు సార్ ఆ సో ది బయాప్సీ మ్యాలిగ్నెన్సీ కూడా ఉండొచ్చు కదా లైక్ స్పైన్ కార్డ్ అన్న మెటాస్టాసిస్ లాంటిది ఆ పాజిబిలిటీ వాస్ దేర్ సార్ సో యాక్చువల్లీ ది థింగ్ ఇస్ వెన్ వి డిస్కస్డ్ విత్ న్యూరో ఫిజిషియన్ హి టోల్డ్ దట్ ఇట్ కుడ్ బి క్రిటికల్ ఇల్నెస్ న్యూరోపతి వర్సెస్ జీబీఎస్ సార్ so we thought that uh, for both uh, uh, cases we, the iuig is the option sir so we will consider it uh, with iuig and he was we, we can't we the ncs finding will support of uh, gbs but we we didn't rule out the other causes okay a uh, petki basically stabilized avalan sa patient it was like a continuous spectrum on somewhere around uh, 7th like that she was admitted in a hospital in gazwaka okay it's mm-hmm. not our day. <laughs> not our team of hospital <laughs> so outside hospital admitted uh, so then the <laughs> routine ga- uh, gynecologist and uh, husband was a surgeon so both of them have done uh, th plus bs1 uh, and then it was sent for biopsy our uh, access path lab they confirmed uh, Krishna Basha sir, later uh, the report came sir, as adenocarcinoma. So, uh, on that like 7th, uh, 8th surgery was done. Uh, 14th, uh, they have done a CT abdomen. Sir. 
CT abdomen, then only some uh, they have given uh, pneumoperitoneum uh, out of proportion to the post-operative day like that. And uh, <clears throat> somehow they still uh, uh, maybe some phobia or fear of uh, getting some complication like that. They have kept the patient there only, not treated uh, like for an as an acute abdomen. Then again, after two days, uh, 16th of um, uh, May, uh, April, I think, 16th of April, again, they have uh, tried for uh, CT abdomen. Uh, patient is unable to lie open for obviously uh, due to the distress and all. And then uh, on 17, they were pushed to corner like uh, she's worsening and uh, they have to uh, send her. Then she came to us. At the time, the, like 17th afternoon, uh, around 3 p.m. like that, we have received this case, 3 or 4 p.m. Kept on NRBM. Uh, uh, initially thought of as post of ALI like that. Then we have seen the CT. Sir. Immediately we have uh, again sent for repeat CT, spoke to Manibabu sir and immediately arranged for like around 7.38 we have uh, shifted her to OT. So uh, then the recovery phase, uh, we thought it's very difficult with fecal peritonitis and all. Luckily she came out but we thought initially that to be like uh, she's very obese so uh, she's not moving like that. Maybe some definitely some uh, one or two days delay in diagnosing the <coughs> weakness part where, when we are trying to move her out, out of ICU uh, by actively mobilizing and all. Then we found out that she is unable to uh, move and all. Then the neuro opinion was taken. Then the, uh, these three possibilities he has to, uh, considered like uh, critical illness neuropathy versus GBS versus uh, uh, it can be a very remote possibility of paraneoplastic, he said at that time. So, but anyhow, we have went with IVIC treatment and uh, data she recovered well. Uh, one more uh, case I would like to, uh, at that time, it's like almost like seven years back. I, I have a few questions uh, regarding that case and all. So, uh, did this guy named Pavan Kumar, I remember him well uh, because he uh, belongs to a village near to us. Mm, at that time, uh, I was more of into OT, doing only occasional weekly ones, night duties and all in the ICU. Uh, Dr. Kavita and uh, Neuro Matsudan Babu sir has taken up that case. So he was actually uh, initially given uh, outside one dose of IVIZ and uh, uh, then plasma versus was done. Then shifted to our hospital sir after around uh, one week to 10 days of treatment. Then again, here also, uh, he has got a second dose of IVIZ, no response in the movements and all. After around three weeks like that, uh, Matsudan Babu sir has reluctantly uh, discussed with uh, all the remaining consultants and all. They have gone for third dose of IVIZ. Surprisingly, after third dose of IVIZ, patient movement started. And then uh, in another uh, three weeks' time, he went away walking from the hospital. So, Tarawat actually the Rajman to Pushkar could have said. And uh, uh, IVIZ, how frequently, uh, I mean, the ideal interval between the two doses, how we can give. Uh, and uh, this combination treatment of plasma versus and IVIZ, what's the evidence I want to know? So we can give both or uh, uh, either of them like that. And how many doses we can go, like cycles? Yeah. We so, also had one patient in uh, when I was in care hospital, one female, uh, more than uh, two months. So we also uh, gave uh, three sessions of IVIG after discussion with uh, uh, NIMS HOD, because she was a relative of NIMS HOD. So uh, th there is no random uh, proof that uh, second dose or third dose will work. There is no randomized control trials to prove that. But still, people are trying this option, second dose or third dose if patient is not improving. And combination of uh, plasma paralysis and IVIG in patient is uh, uh, still better and not uh, improving. Even though there is no evidence, but we, people are trying. Okay, sir. Uh, any re recurrence of GBS uh, change, sir? Less chances, sir. Yeah, I less that. chances, sir. Usually, yeah. second dose of IgG we can try after six weeks of uh, uh, recovery. I mean, like, after six weeks, sir, the try should be done, sir. That means, the extra good, clear, clear, end, sir, try should be done. Actually, sir, 
David, uh, actually we had a few cases uh, coming with recurrence of uh, GPS maybe after uh, two years, three years. Uh, and they were again treated with uh, IVIG and then they recovered and then they were shifted back like with the tracheostomy and like that. And uh, another thing like a post-operative case, uh, like we also had one post cesarean. She actually presented to us with uh, uh, sepsis, septic shock and then she was... Uh, done um, laparotomy and evacuation of whatever clots, everything was done because she was on ventilator MR, everything was normal. But post-operatively, slowly she showed recovery and then we found that she was having uh, um, neuropathy like that. Then uh, uh, she regained consciousness but unable to move. Then again, her Hello? Hello? I am going to do Sir, Srikant. First case, lo, uh, uh, ante, what is the suspicion of uh, uh, critical illness neuropathy? It is a sudden onset and patient is not bedded in for a long time and not uh, diabetes. Uh, uh, and by the time it was one, one, uh, one month, sir. Uh, one month, sir. Ah, one month, sir. Starting of surgery in one month, and sir. Weakness. Ah, now. starting of surgery in one month. Since one month, then almost uh, after three bed days of surgery in inch, bed dead in the end. Second, uh, you asked, no, you put IV, uh, IG, and uh, any dose of the So, two doses, uh, and uh, one core system, uh, you can give in uh, two models. One is 400 mics per kg for five days or one gram per kg two days each coach uh, usually one gram per kg two days is followed mainly in the pediatric patients usually uh, second thing is uh, whether we can do a uh, plasma phersis uh, and a plasma phersis and immunoglobulins and two therapies ki role at the level what we used to do is uh, we used to have a do a plasma phersis first time when the patient is identified as a GBS, we do a plasma phersis. Once we do a plasma phersis, then if required, because that is on the, uh, is a desperate uh, situation only, then we can top up with the uh, immunoglobulins. But there is no role of first immunoglobulins followed by uh, plasma phersis. So, but the evidence based both the therapies, there is no role, only... Uh, one therapy is both are equivalent and we can try only one therapy. This can we re repeat plasma exchange, sir? No, repeat plasma exchange. It's just all along. So, what uh, is the dose adequate for the plasma exchange? Dose. After uh, that, every 20, 24 hours gap is equal. And uh, my uh, experience, for the moment, I think plasma exchange is doing better. When compared with the immunoglobulins, uh, faster recovery and pitch, but evidence is not that supporting anything. Actually, omniarchal uh, patient sir, uh, present with sudden onset of weakness and morning uh, and weakness start in the evening uh, by the time of 10 k respiratory distress searching, sir, and complete respiratory paralysis searching the implantation. So immediately plasma paralysis start chasm, sir, initial five sessions this double plasma filter spit down, sir. After five sessions, any recovery rale. IVIG five days course zero point four and four milligrams per kg start chasm, sir. At the start chasm tarvat got a padga recovery late, sir. Six weeks work, almost six to seven weeks work patient on ventilatory support. Uh, respiratory para, uh, uh, paralysis alage undi sir after 6 weeks slowly recovering prasthan ku ippudu bipap tho support bipap support tho maintain avutnaru ippudiki almost 8 weeks ayindi ee patient ki first plasma paralysis chesamu tarvata ivig kuda ichchanu but uh, time we have to ma uh, neurophysician em chepparante koncham 8 weeks of time work cheyali usually recovery starts after 8 weeks of uh, uh, plasma paralysis or ivig em chepparu sir 
సో స్టిల్ పేషెంట్ కి క్వాడ్రిప్లేజియా ఉండి రెస్పిరేటరీ వైజ్ కొంచెం ఇంప్రూవ్ అయ్యాడు ఐ మీన్ కంట్రోల్ మోడ్ నుంచి సపోర్ట్ మోడ్కి వచ్చాడు సో వన్ ఆర్ టూ డేస్ లో రీహాబ్ సెంటర్ కి షిఫ్ట్ చేద్దామని ప్లాన్ ఈ పేషెంట్ కి సివియర్ అటనామిక్ డిస్ఫంక్షన్ ఉంది సార్ సక్షన్ చేస్తున్నప్పుడు పేషెంట్ హార్ట్ రేట్ వన్ యూజువల్ గా వన్ టెన్ వన్ ట్వంటీ ఉండేది సక్షన్ చేస్తున్నప్పుడు కానీ సడన్ గా ఫార్టీ థర్టీ వరకు వచ్చేది సార్ అయిన మళ్ళీ తర్వాత ఆక్సిజనేషన్ ఇస్తూ ఉంటే నార్మల్ అయ్యింది సార్ ఈ పేషెంట్ కి బీపీ ఫ్లక్చువేషన్స్ కూడా ఓవర్ టూ హండ్రెడ్ టూ ట్వంటీ వరకు వెళ్ళింది సార్ ఇది లెబిట్ లో ఇన్ఫ్యూజన్ స్టార్ట్ చేసాము దానికి రెస్పాండ్ అయ్యారు ఫోర్ త్రీ ఆర్ ఫోర్ టైమ్స్ సివియర్ రెస్పిరేటరీ డిస్ట్రెస్ వచ్చింది డ్యూ టు ప్రొలాంగ్ వెంటిలేషన్ వల్ల అనుకుంటే ఈ మ్యూకస్ ఫ్లెక్స్ ఇవన్నీ ఫామ్ అయింది సార్ బ్యాప్ ఒకసారి అదే న్యూమోనియా వచ్చింది సార్ దాని తర్వాత న్యూమోనియా నుంచి రికవర్ అయ్యాడు తర్వాత బ్రాన్కోస్కోపి చేస్తే ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ సెక్రేషన్స్ ఉన్నాయి సార్ పేషెంట్ లో డిఫరెంట్ గా ఏంటి అంటే నిబిలైజేషన్ పెడితే మనకి విజిబుల్ గా హైపోటెన్షన్ వచ్చేది సార్ డయాలిన్ పెట్టినా ఎనీ నిబిలైజేషన్ ఏ నిబిలైజేషన్ పెట్టినా ఇన్స్టెంట్ గా బీపీస్ మాత్రం చాలా డ్రాప్ అయిపోయినాయి సార్ దానికి ఏదైనా రీజన్ ఉంటుంది బట్ ఫర్ నిబిలైజేషన్ యూఆర్ డిస్కనెక్ట్ ఉంది వెంటిలేటర్ ఎందుకు <laughs> అది ఆల్మోస్ట్ నేను ఒక ఇంకో ఇద్దరు ఇంటెన్సిఫేషన్ ముగ్గురు ట్రై చేసాం సార్ బెడ్ సైడ్ ఉండి దాని గురించా కానీ యూజువల్ గా సక్షన్ చేస్తున్నప్పుడు ఒక్కొక్కసారి ఓపెన్ సక్షన్ చేసాం సార్ అప్పుడు బీపీ డ్రాప్ ఏం లేదు అప్పుడు బ్రాడీ కార్డ్ ఏ ఉంది సార్ బీపీ డ్రాప్ లేదు కానీ నెబిలైజేషన్ పెడుతున్నప్పుడు మాత్రం క్లాసికల్ గా హైపోటెన్షన్ వస్తుంది సార్ వచ్చింది సార్ ఫోర్ టైమ్స్ అప్పుడు యువర్ టైటల్ వాల్యూమ్ విల్ బి హై కదా నడుస్తుంటది కదా అవును సార్ అవును వెంటిలేటర్ కూడా నడుస్తుంటది కదా సో యూ యువర్ టైటల్ వాల్యూమ్ డ్యూరింగ్ నెబిలైజేషన్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ ఎంత పెడతావో ఆక్సిజన్ అనేది సిక్స్ లీటర్స్ పెడతావా టెన్ లీటర్స్ పెడతావా అని దాన్ని బట్టి ఆన్ వెంటిలేటర్ ప్రాబులీ అది రీజన్ ఉండొచ్చు బట్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద పేషెంట్స్ ఆన్ వెంటిలేటర్ మోర్ దాన్ ఎయిట్ ఆర్ టెన్ పీప్ కంటే ఉంటే మాత్రం మేమైతే వి డోంట్ పుట్ పేషెంట్ ఆన్ నెబిలైజర్ వి డోంట్ వాంట్ లూజ్ ద ఏరోడట్లేదా Yeah, we are raising air on it. We don't have to worry about the discount. So it will maintain the peep also. Oh, no. It's not a good thing, sir. It's not a good thing, sir. It's a portable thing. Okay. Zero is not a good thing, sir. Is it a nebulizer? Do you have an inspirator limb? Or is it just a... ట్యూబ్ 
యాక్చువల్లీ హ్యావ్ టు ఫిగర్ అవుట్ ద రీజన్ వై దర్ ఇస్ హైపోటెన్షన్ ఇది డైరెక్ట్ గా జస్ట్ నెబ్లైజర్ పెట్టిన హైపోటెన్షన్ కాదు సమ్ సర్క్యూట్ డిస్కనెక్షన్ ఎంట్రోరాసిక్ ప్రెషర్ పెరగడం మరి ఎక్కువ వస్తున్నప్పుడు కొంచెం డిస్టెండ్ అయ్యి లంగ్ అంటే ఓవర్ పీరియడ్ మీకు టెన్ మినిట్స్ నెబ్లేషన్ ఉన్న ఇట్ ఈస్ కీప్ ఆన్ ఎక్యుములేటింగ్ కదా అండ్ యూఆర్ నాట్ ఎలైవింగ్ ఎక్స్పిరేటరీ బికాస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ యుర్ కనెక్టింగ్ అట్ ది జంక్షన్ నాట్ ఇట్ ది ఇన్స్పిరేటరీ లింబ్ నాట్ ఒకసారి ఇన్స్పిరేటరీ లింబ్ లో కనెక్ట్ చేసి అప్పుడు చూడండి ఒకసారి ఇంకొక పేషెంట్ సార్ రీసెంట్ లీ ఒక యంగ్ బాయ్ డెంగ్యూతో వచ్చారు సార్ ఆయనకి నారెడ్ స్టార్ట్ చేస్తే సివియర్ గా హెడ్ ఏక్ కంప్లైంట్ చేసి సడన్ బ్రాడీ టూ టైమ్స్ వచ్చింది సార్ అది కూడా రీజన్ ఎందుకో తెలియలేదు అది ఏమైద్దో నేను చెప్తాను సార్ ఏంటన్నా నవ్వుతున్నా చెప్తా నేను నేను చెప్తాను దానికి ఏం చేస్తారంటే నారెడ్ ఎక్కడ పెట్టావు నారెడ్ సెంట్రల్ లైన్ సెంట్రల్ లైన్ సార్ ఆ లైన్ లో ఐ ఫ్లూడ్ ఏమైనా ఉందా లేదు లేదు సార్ మేము చూసాం అది కూడా ఐ ఫ్లూడ్ కూడా ఏం లేదు సార్ ఆ ఇన్వేజ్ లైన్ ఉండదులే కానీ మామూలు ఆర్టిరియల్ లైన్ ఉందా ఆ ఇన్వేజ్ ఆర్టిరియల్ లైన్ ఉందా ఆ ఆర్టిరియల్ లైన్ సార్ డెంగ్యూ షాక్ అనేది ప్రెసెంట్ అయ్యాడు సార్ ఫస్ట్ గా ఇనిషియల్ గా ఫ్లూయిడ్ రిసెస్టెట్ చేసాము యంగ్ బాయ్ కాబట్టి సెవెంటీన్ ఇయర్స్ ఎంతో మేల్ సార్ సో ఫ్లూయిడ్ రిసెస్టేషన్ చేసినా కూడా ఇంకా హైపోటెన్షన్ పరిస్థితి గా ఉంది సో టూ డీక్ వచ్చేస్తే కొంచెం కార్డియోమయోపతి ఫ్యూచర్స్ ఉన్నాయి సార్ సో అందుకని చెప్పేసి కార్డియాలజిస్ట్ అడ్వైజ్ ప్రకారం నాలుగు స్టార్ట్ చేసాం సార్ ఇలా స్టార్ట్ చేసిన విత్ ఇన్ లెస్ దెన్ వన్ మినిట్ సార్ పేషెంట్ కంప్లైంట్ ఆఫ్ సివియర్ హెడ్ యాక్ ఇవెంట్ ఇన్ టు బ్రాడీ సార్ టూ టైమ్స్ ఆ టైమ్ లో హైపర్టెన్షన్ వచ్చిందా ఆ హైపర్టెన్షన్ సార్ హైపర్టెన్షన్ హైపోనా హైపో హైపో సార్ కాదు అనార బ్రాడీ వచ్చినప్పుడు లేదు లేదు సార్ హైపర్టెన్షన్ ఏ ఉంది బిపి షూట్ అవుట్ అవలేదు సార్ హైపర్టెన్షన్ అలాగే ఉంది ఓన్లీ హార్ట్ రేట్ డ్రాప్ అయింది సార్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ పేషెంట్ అప్రోలింగ్ ఆఫ్ ఐ ఐ వరకు వచ్చింది సార్ మళ్ళీ ఇమిడియట్ గా నార డాప్ చేస్తే క సేప్ కొంచెం యాంబు చేస్తే అంటే ఈ నారెడ్ పెడుతున్నంత సేపు హెడ్ ఏక్ అని చెప్తున్నారు సార్ అదర్వైజ్ సేమ్ డే టూ టైమ్స్ సార్ తర్వాత మేము ఇంకా డేర్ చేయలేదు ఓన్లీ ఇంకా తర్వాత ఫ్లూయిడ్ రిజిస్ట్రేషన్ స్టార్ట్ చేసింది సార్ నారెడ్ పెట్టలేదు నారెడ్ బోల్ ఎంటీజీ పెట్టేదేమో చూసుకో లేదు సార్ జరిగింది అలాగా సార్ మేము సార్ సిటీ బ్రెయిన్ తర్వాత చేసాము కానీ సిగ్నిఫికెంట్ గా ఏమి లేదు సార్ సిటీ బ్రెయిన్ అంటే పేషెంట్ స్టెబిలైజ్ అయిన తర్వాత చేసాము పెద్దగా ఏమి లేదు సార్ అంటే ఆ రోజు పేషెంట్ అటెండెన్స్ కౌన్సిల్ చేసి ఇలాగ నారెడ్డి వ్యాస ప్రెషర్ పెడితే ఇలాగ అవుతుందని చెప్పి ఆ రోజు నైట్ అంతా పేషెంట్ వాజ్ ఆన్ ఎంటీజీ ఫర్ హైపర్ టెన్షన్ దెన్ ఆఫ్టర్ దట్ పేషెంట్ ఎంటీ టు హైపర్ టెన్షన్ We yeah. told them to start the Noradin and remove the NTG. Sure. What happened? Noradin is loaded, but uh, that uh, PM line is there, no? Yes, sir. That is connected okay. without removing the NTG in the line. Okay, sir. Mm-hmm. So, whenever you start patient further going into hypotension, I told them to give bolus uh, again further <laughs> going into hypotension. Sure. Then, uh, then we identified. So, this type of mishaps will happen. 
యాక్చువల్లీ మేమేమి అనుకున్నాం అంటే ఏమైనా నా రెడ్ ఎక్స్పైరీ డేట్ ఏమో అని చెప్పేసి సెకండ్ టైమ్ వేరే కొత్త నా రెడ్ చేసి పెట్టాం సార్ అది అది పెట్టినప్పుడు కూడా సేమ్ అలాగే వచ్చింది దాని మేబీ అయ్యింది వచ్చి అంటే క్లియర్ గా విత్ ఇన్ వన్ మినిట్ లో హైపర్ టెన్షన్ సేమ్ అలాంటప్పుడు నారెడ్డి నారెడ్డిని ఒకదానికి వస్తే సార్ ఏ వ్యాస ప్రసిద్ధ పెట్టిన సేమ్స్ ఐ డోంట్ నో హ్యావ్ టు చెక్ ఓకే నో బడి నోస్ ఓకే సార్ ఇంకా అందుకని నెక్స్ట్ దానికి కూడా మేము ట్రై చేయొచ్చు ఫ్లూయిడ్స్ తో మేనేజ్ హెవీ డోపమైన్ అలాగా యు కెన్ గో టు అదర్ ఇంకా ట్రై చేయలేదు సార్ ఆడ ఎండ్ వాళ్ళ పేరెంట్స్ చాలా అప్రిహెన్సివ్ గా ఉన్నారు టు రికవర్ అయినా డెంగ్యూ విత్ షాక్ ఆ రికవర్ అయ్యింది సార్ ఓకే గుడ్ If there are no more questions, uh, we will uh, stop the session. Thank you, Naresh. Uh, very well presentation, followed by two interesting cases. Uh, thank you, Srikant, to introduce Naresh uh, for this uh, Motan team for this presentation. Thank you all uh, participants for your active participation. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Naresh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you all.